Hey guys, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. How are you today? Hello, Tammy. Hey, Erica. Uh, good morning, Debbie and Laura and Linda. How is everybody? Hello, Christy from North Carolina. Um, hello, Teresa. You guys are busy in the comments. Um, let's see. Good morning, Nancy. Hello, Pamela. How's everybody doing? Brenda's watching from Northern Kentucky. I'm from Western Kentucky, in case you're wondering. Good morning, Barbara. Thank you for waiting patiently. Um, so we always start that little countdown right before I go live and it runs for five minutes until the actual live time. So if you don't want to watch it, just wait and show up right at 11 o'clock because that's when the countdown should be over um, unless I accidentally clicked it a little late and got started a little late. But today we're doing something a little bit different. You may be wondering why my door hanger is already painted that's sitting in front of me. Thank you, Tammy. She said, I love your curly hair. Yeah, we went back to curly today. I've been having it straight and moderately curly over the last few days and or a few weeks. And now I'm ready to go back to natural curls for a little bit. So, okay, today we are going to be showing you how to put lettering up here on the door hanger without having to freehand it, because I know that's a big hang up for a lot of you. And it, it's scary uh, to try to freehand lettering on here. And it's also um, annoying, I guess, if you hate your hand lettering, if you don't like your own handwriting, right? So um, let me take this off the screen. By the way, if you didn't get a text letting you know we were going live today, you can get you can get text notifications by texting the number on the screen. And we always alert you when we're getting ready to go live with something. Um, so I'm gonna take that off. Good morning, Louise from Illinois. Hello, Anita. Yes, I see you. Hi, Brooke. Good morning, Marina. Okay, so we're going to actually do this a little different today because like I said, we're teaching you the hand lettering, but we're going to start by screen sharing what I see on my computer when I create the lettering and then I'm going to print it out and then I'm going to show you how to um, use it on your door hanger because in order for this to work properly, you need to know how to create it on your computer first and how to print it and how to use it on the door hanger. Okay. So we're going to go into Canva. If you don't know what Canva is, it is C A N V A.com. Sounds like canvas, but without the S canva.com. It's a free platform. You can go on there and you can create all kinds of awesome graphics and stuff like that. You can use it from your phone or your iPad. I'm using it today from my laptop. So um, I'm going to bring that up and I'm going to screen share in just a moment and we will walk you through everything. So I'm thinking that this door hanger is going to end up hanging on my chicken coop. And so I started Googling cute chicken coop signs and I found one that said the fluffy butt hut. <laughs> and I was like, that's it. That's what I got to put on this door hanger. So this is what I'm going to teach you how to create in Canva. And I'm going to show you um, how to then get it on your door hanger. This one actually came out a wee bit smaller than I wanted. So um, when I reprint it, I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to figure out the sizing too, because that's a big hang up for people. All right. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go to Canva. Let me make sure you guys are seeing what you're supposed to be seeing. Awesome. Um, let's see. Let me see if I can make this. There we go. Full screen for you guys. Okay, so this is what it looks like inside of Canva. Um, when you land, you won't probably won't see all this stuff. These are all designs that like I have created inside Canva. So what we're going to do is go to this purple button up at the right that says create a design. We're going to click there and we're going to go down um, and let's just choose. I want to print uh, use just a regular sheet of paper. Let's see. So I'm looking at the sizes because see how there's sizes. Well, let's just do custom size and we'll just type in um, eight and a half because that's how big a piece of paper is. Eight and a half by 11. And then I need to change this from pixels to inches. Whoops, it messed me up. Let me type it in again. Eight and a half by 11. Okay, now this will give us a regular printer size sheet of paper. And actually I wanted it rotate. I wanted it um, landscape. So I'm going to have to change that as well. Let me go to resize. And instead of eight and a half, we'll do 11 by eight and a half. There we go. And resize. There we go. Now we have our, our printer sheet of paper. So now what we need to do is we need to add some text. So you've got some options over here on the left. We're going to click the one that has a T says text. 
and it's going to put a little text or actually it's going to give us some options. So let's just click add a heading. This just kind of like tells them, tells Canva what size uh, text you're going to add in. So we're just going to type in fluffy um, because that's going to be one of the words that we're going to do. So if you were going to type in the fluffy butt hut, left fluffy butt, whoops, I got to be able to spell first, butt hut then it's all going to be one size and everything right here. I'm going to go ahead and make this quite large so we can see it really well. Now, the thing is, is when you only create one text box and you alter the font inside this text box, it changes all the letters to that, right? So if you want to have two different kinds of fonts and you want to be able to make each word a different font or a different size, you're going to have to create a different text box for each word. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's go ahead and click on this one and I'm going to control C to copy and control V to paste. So I'm creating, now I have two uh, text boxes that are exactly the same. I'm going to take fluffy out of this one. I'll go ahead and take butt hut out of the, <laughs> out of the rest of it too. It sounds funny to say that. Um, so now we have V in a separate text box. Let's hit control V again. Let me move V over here out of the way. Now we want um, butt in its own text box. My screen is frozen. Oh no. Oh no. Let's see. Somebody said frozen screen. Uh oh. I wonder if I need to disconnect the. Okay. Let's see. Hang on. Remove. Am I unfrozen? Let's see. Okay. Let's try to reshare and see if that fixes it. Stop screen share. That's what I need to do. Stop screen share. Share screen. Chrome tab this one. Okay. Is it unfrozen now? Let me go back. Okay. I think you guys can see. Did that fix it? Somebody said it froze as soon as you picked the size of the paper. Oh boy. Okay. So <laughs> when you choose the size of paper, you can also click this little button up here. It says file and then there's resize. You can change the size. So I changed it from, I think, um, eight and a half to 11 by 11 by eight and a half. So now that now we're in portrait mode so it's 11 wide by eight and a half tall and then like i said over here on the left there's a button that says text can you guys still are you still following okay good you can see it now so you're going to click the t that says text and then you're going to click add heading and that's going to put a text box over here like i said you want each word in its own text box so let's see we're going to go ahead and delete out everything that is on here so that we have each word in its own text box. So we've got the in a text box, fluffy, but now I'm going to control C and then hit control V and that's going to create one more text box so I can type in hut. Okay. I think there's a space here. Let me delete that. There we go. Now we have all of our words in their own text boxes. Let me make sure I'm not frozen. Are we, we're still good. Okay. Awesome. Thank you guys for the feedback. Hopefully I'm not moving too fast for this through this for you guys, but we're going to try to make this um, quick. If you need to watch this on the replay to be able to keep up and pause so that you're going click by click through this with me later, just know that you can do that. So to select a word, we're going to double click on the word, double click again, and it highlights that word. I don't want fluffy to be this kind of font. So let's go up here and do you see all these options along the top? This font that we're using right now is called Sunday. It's one of Canva's free fonts. Um, some of the fonts that have this teeny tiny, I don't know if you can see that this teeny tiny little crown next to them are paid fonts. So you have to be a Canva pro user in order to use them. So I don't know if the one I'm using today is a Canva pro font or not, but okay. What I'm wanting to do is I want to have fluffy and butt be in a script font rather than scrolling through all of these fonts. I'm going to type in the search bar up here, um, handwriting and see what I get because I want like a handwriting script and I believe this was the one that I liked and it does look like it's a free font it's not a um a pro font it says apricots you could also type in uh, cursive or script and just describe the kind of lettering you're looking for that will narrow down your choices so we're going to click on apricots and look it changed fluffy to that one now let's double click on butt highlight it click apricots and there we go so we're going to keep fluffy and butt in the fancy cursive handwriting font. Let me move it around. You can drag to select and, and move them around. 
and then we're going to have the and hut in the other font, which is called Sunday. Let me go back and see if I missed any questions with you guys real quick. You're welcome, Kathy. I'm glad this is helpful. Danita says you're going at the right speed. Sometimes I do things at the speed of light and I talk way too fast. So um, Leanne says it's repeating everything you say twice. Hmm. I'm not sure why that would be. <laughs> okay, everybody's saying everything's good. So we're going to keep moving. Maybe it's just Leanne's phone or something. Okay, so now we need to figure out our sizing, right? Because we don't want the and hut to be huge. So let's go ahead and click and drag to select fluffy and butt. And we're going to drag and select to make that larger on the screen. And that's pretty large. And now we can rearrange and see how these little pink guides pop up to kind of help you keep things centered. Um, when I created mine, let me show you real quick what I had done so that you guys can see it. The original one that I created, hold on, here we go. The original one that I created looks like this. So you can see that the and hut are not perfectly aligned. And the reason for that is because, uh, Shan's here taking pictures. The reason for that is because um, the chicken's head is in an awkward spot, right? We don't want the and hut to be perfect. I can't get it straightened up. We don't want the and hut to be perfectly aligned or the word hut runs into her head. So keep that in mind when you're, um, when you're doing this. And the next thing I wanted to show you guys, which I almost forgot about, is I wanted to show you guys how to take a photo of your door hanger and upload it on here so that you can kind of decide how you want your lettering to be arranged. So on the left, you see where it says uploads, click uploads. Now you're going to upload a photo from your phone or your device of your door hanger. So I have already done that. There's my chicken. Um, you can shrink down and crop this down so that like I took it like while it was laying on the carpet. So this is not a beautiful photo and it doesn't need to be a gorgeous photo of your door hanger. The only reason we're doing this is so we can get the placement of our wording correct and we can kind of visualize what this lettering might look like on our door hanger. So now I'm going to select my lettering. Whoops, let me unselect that. Hang on. Okay, I'm going to select each word and hold down my my shift button. Is it the shift? Yeah, the shift button so that it selects just the words that I want. Okay, now I'm going to shrink these down. The only reason I'm shrinking it down right now is so that we can get the placement correct. We'll, we'll drag it and make it bigger, bigger later. But for right now, we're just visualizing what we want this to look like. So we will put the up here near the top. And I did all of this kind of yesterday. So that's kind of why this seems probably effortless for me right now to you guys. Um, it's because I kind of played around with this yesterday and I chose the fonts that I want. And I made sure that everything I had was something that I liked. And so you can kind of rearrange. You can make those a little bit smaller so that you want your, um, your lettering to sort of be pr uh, proportional compared to uh, everything else. So we've got fluffy and butt here. Let's see. Let's see if I can click on both of those. There we go. And make them a little bit bigger. I want that to be like the part that everybody notices is the fluffy butt part. I don't want hut and the to stand out as much. So I'm going to rearrange just a little bit. I'm shrinking and changing sizes. Let's make the just a hair bigger. There we go. Okay, now this is what it would look like, right? If I had it printed and put on my door hanger. Only my door hanger photo is just a wee bit crooked. I wonder if it'll let me. It will let me rotate that. So let me rotate this till it's at least straight. See, now the stripes are straight. That, that makes me feel better. Okay, so now that we have this on here, we know what it would look like if we painted our lettering black, right? Well, what if you were trying to decide whether or not you wanted your lettering to be black or white. Well, now you can click, hold down your shift key and click all the letters. And we're gonna go up here to the top and change our text color. We can play around by changing it to blue or white or pink. And this kind of helps you visualize what color lettering you wanna do on your door hanger. Well, I already know that I wanna do black, but the black still doesn't feel punchy enough for me. I'm like, it still needs a little something. 
So I'm wondering in my head, what if I did this with a drop shadow? What would that look like? Well, guess what? You can even play around with that in Canva. Let's click on effects. Now that you've clicked on effects, click on shadow. And it's added a little shadow. Now right here is the color of your shadow. So click on that little square. What if we did a white shadow? Oh, it didn't change all of them. I've got to go through and individually change each one. So let's click on just the word, but change that one to white. It'll let you add a shadow to all of them, but it won't let you um, change the color of all of them at one time. Not sure what that's about. Although now that I have the placement correct, I wonder if I go through and select each of these and highlight them, you can group objects together. Let me try to group them and see if it will let me change all of them at the same time now that they're grouped. I bet it won't. We're going to try though. Um, okay. Color is white. Now the other thing is you can barely see, let's zoom in. Whoa, that was way too much y'all. Back it up, back it up. You can barely see that drop shadow. Over here, you see transparency. If we drag transparency all the way to the right, okay, it's only changing one at a time, but you can see that that becomes much easier to see. Um, I also can change the offset. So if I want it, the shadow to go a different way, a different direction, I can change the direction or I can make it a really offset shadow by dragging this down. I don't want it to be super offset. I want it to be kind of narrow. So I'm going to drag that back to about 36, keep my direction at 45. Now let's click on each individual letter and pull the transparency to 100. I'm going to put this at 36 and I'm just changing each individual word to make sure that they all have the same offset number and the same transparency number changing to, to 36 and 45. Did that work? Oh, it didn't set. Hold on. 36. And now let's change transparency to 100. Okay. Which one am I on? Oh, I don't know. 36, the 100. Let's just drag it. Type it in the number was not working for me. Okay, now the word hut, it says that it's correct, but why can't I see it as well? Let me try changing. Maybe because this is a different font, I have to make the offset higher for you to be able to see it. I think that's probably correct. Okay, so now we have our, our um, drop shadow, but now I'm wondering, okay, what if I did the drop shadow in a different color? So let's click on, a, on, on one of the fonts and change it from white to maybe yellow or something bold. You could click even like turquoise if you wanted turquoise. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that I like the yellow. So let's take a vote real quick. Do you guys like yellow or do you like white? We'll do part of it in yellow, part of it in white, and you guys can vote because whatever you guys decide is how we're going to paint it. Uh, let's see. Yellow or white? Leanne says, this is amazing. Debbie says, this is awesome. I'm so glad you guys are loving this. This, um, um, it's really a fun way to like figure out how you want to design your door hangers. Okay. I'm seeing lots of white comments, a couple of yellows. The girl who said, the lady who said yellow, you, um, you must be like me. You like color and everything. I do for sure. I like lots of color. I'm thinking white is the overwhelming choice. White is the safe choice for sure. We'll say that like white is the one that seems like the obvious choice, but sometimes if you do something odd, like add a yellow drop shadow or a pink drop shadow or something, it could really make something stand out, but we're going to go with white just to be safe on this design. So, um, Cindy wants to see what it looks like with the pink. So let me show you with pink. That's a really dark pink, but maybe a lighter pink. That's kind of cute, right? So if you had used pink like on the tail of your uh, chicken or maybe her necklace was, would, was pink, it would be really fun to add a pop of pink in the lettering. So we're going to go with white. Now the thing is, now that we have this all designed, I'm going to remove the drop shadow, okay? The reason I'm doing this is because Whoops, that is not what I, I've got to click on none here. The reason I'm doing this is because I am, I don't need the drop shadow on the printout. I'm going to add the drop shadow myself afterwards. And it might, it might just uh, confuse, th confuse things. I can't talk today. It might just confuse things. If I keep the drop shadow on there when I print it, especially printed on white paper, you wouldn't be able to see a white drop shadow. All right, now we have our design done we are ready to figure out the sizing so here's the tricky part too let's delete the photo of our chicken 
All we need is our words. We're going to highlight them. We're going to drag and make it bigger. Now, I got to switch camera angles on you guys. Let's we'll see. Okay, so here's the tricky part. So now you're going to need, oh, can you hand me a ruler out of that top, top drawer there? I put it up and I didn't need to. I needed to keep it out. You're going to take a ruler and you're going to measure the, air, the widest area that you're going to put lettering. And I know that I'm going to be putting the fluffy butt hut part right across this stripe here, right? So that area is roughly 11 inches long. That's not going to be hard to fit on a single sheet of paper, right? Because our piece of paper is 11 inches long. The part that's going to be uh, tricky on this is figuring out the height. Because if I print my fluffy butt lettering at 11 inches wide, then it's going to be so big that it's possibly going to get on top of her face or on something else. And we may not want that. Um, let's see. Deborah said, if you go right to cutting, can you keep the drop shadow and score it? Don't think so. I wouldn't advise that. Uh, Christy said this tutorial is so informative. Awesome. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. All right. So let's go back to the canvas. Well, actually, hang on. Okay. Yes. Let's go back. I had to think through the process. Let's go back to the canvas screen so I can show you guys how to figure out your, your sizing. All right. On the canvas screen, we are going to click on file up here at the top. Now we want to make sure that there is a check mark beside show rulers. Um, and show print bleed. See that itty bitty little uh, border that it put around the edge of the paper? Your printer is not going to be able to print outside that little border. So you've got to keep your lettering inside that border. Um, and then the rulers popped up. Do you see how part of the ruler is gray? That is showing us how wide our current design is. Now we said we needed to stay within 11 inches. We have done that. Now I need to ungroup this. The reason I'm ungrouping it is because I personally need to know how tall each word is. So now that I've ungrouped it, I can click on the word fluffy. And over here on the left, you can see that the ruler is grayed out in the area that the word fluffy is taking up. So it's roughly from about one and a half inches to about four inches. So that's what, two and a quarter inches in size. So now that I know that, I can look on my door hanger and I can say, okay, um, I need my words to fit right in this area here. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to size right here. I only have four inches from the top of my door hanger to the top of the chicken's comb from here to here. I only have four inches that I can fit that in. Now the word hut is going to fit over here. No problem. Well, I'm not worried about that. I am worried about the word the and the word fluffy butt fitting. So we're, we've got four inches to work with. Shannon's giggling every time I say uh, fluffy butt. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back to Canva. Oh, there we go. Okay. So now that we're back in Canva, if we have two, two and a quarter inches here, this is where you have to think about a little bit of math. We can also select the, and see how much space we have that taking up. It's, uh, almost right at four inches y'all like that's, that's pretty close. So I feel pretty safe in saying that this is appropriately sized because this area here takes up on our little ruler over here just under four inches. So I'm actually not going to resize this or drag it or anything. I'm going to print it exactly as is, and we're going to see how it comes out. I'm going to move this lettering down, down just a little bit so that it's aligned. Did you see that little pink line pop up when I moved it? Like you want it to be, that, uh, that pink line is now going through the word fluffy and butt. That lets me know that those two words are lined up. Okay, so now we're going to click download, and it's going to download a copy of it to your device, whether you're working on a phone or whatever you're working on. You can open it up, and is that it? Yes, it is. Now we can hit print. Where is print? Let me try right-clicking on it. Oh, no, file up here. Sorry, you guys. I'm still getting used to having a Mac. <laughs> We're going to go to print. Oh, is that something not showing up? Yeah. Hold on. My my assistant here is giving me a funny look like she they can't see what you're seeing. Only the <laughs> uh, okay, hang on. Let me stop screen share and share my whole screen. Entire screen. Share. 
Oh yeah, that looks crazy, don't it? Oh. Okay, let's go to the um, the file that I just pulled up. So here's the file. I'm gonna go file and print. I'm just gonna have it print out just like this. It's gonna come out on my printer and Shan's gonna hand it to me and then we're gonna check and make sure everything lines up good. Um, hey, Monica, she said, how do we add the drop shadow on the surface? There's a button at the top. Once you click on one of the words, it says effects. Click on effects and um, it'll let you choose the kind of shadow you want. If you guys are enjoying this tutorial, um, I, I really appreciate the feedback in the comments. Uh, this is stuff that like, you know, I do all the time and I don't think twice about it. I feel like everybody knows I do it, but obviously, you, got, you know, they don't or y'all wouldn't find it so helpful. Okay. So now we have it printed out. What also I like to do is take all this excess paper away so that I can see how it fits around my design. Ignore my crude cut lines. It's okay. All right. So now that we have it all cut away, Ooh, that came out quite nice. You can see that it fits just right because this area here was about just under four inches. So you, you can see that it fits really nicely right in there. Okay, now we're going to show you. Okay, I love this. Robin said this is a game changer for me. Awesome. You're welcome, Katie. Teresa says this is so helpful. You guys are filling up my cup right now. I'm a words of affirmation kind of gal. And so since you guys are telling me how much you love it, it's just filling me up. Um, Cindy, we have been using the program called Canva, C-A-N-V-A. -A. Marina loves the tutorial. Awesome. She couldn't figure out Canva. We actually, I think, have a tutorial or in the Painters Clubhouse about Canva, I think. Or no, maybe it's in our Paint to Profit membership. All right. The next thing you're going to need is graphite paper. You can see this paper has been used and abused. We have used it so, so much. So, okay. Here's the tricky thing, too, is since this isn't covering the whole door hanger, we need to make sure we get it aligned and don't move it. So I'm gonna like put my finger here. Well, actually, let's be smart. Let's get a piece of tape. I got tape right here. I just had to dig it out. So we've got some frog tape here. I'm just gonna get a little bitty square of it and we're gonna create a hinge. So I'm gonna make sure this is nice and lined up where I want it. And then I'm gonna put my tape right here. This makes a hinge. So now you can fold it over Put your graphite paper underneath, fold it back up. Voila, it did not move. Now take a ink pen and we're just going to trace. Hold on, let me make this bigger for you guys. We're just going to trace around the outer edge of each letter. Another thing that I didn't think to tell you guys that you could have done is you could have changed your font color to like a light gray. And that helps with tracing so that you can see exactly where you're tracing. Because sometimes when you're tracing with an ink pen on top of black ink, it can be difficult to see what you've traced and what you have not. So just store that information away for next time. And I'm not very good at being super precise about my tracing. I sometimes get outside the lines. That's okay. We just want the overall rough shape of the lettering because once I start to paint it, it, it may look a little different from this anyways. But this makes it so easy for you guys to come up with your own custom lettering on your pieces. If you wanted to do a baby name on a door hanger or a family name, this is the easiest way to do it and to ensure that everything's going to be sized. Whoops, I got way off the line there. Everything's going to be sized appropriately <clears throat> and it's all going to fit. Because I don't know how many times when I used to do hand lettering at my paint parties that I would write somebody's name on there and I would either misspell it and then have to figure out how to paint over it and fix it. Or I would start writing and I would realize, oh, their name is really long and it's not going to fit in this area. And it's really difficult to then figure that out midway through your painting the lettering in. If you guys like my little bracelet, by the way, Charlie made me this for Mother's Day. And I told her I would wear it on today's video. It feels a little weird because it's between my hand and the table and I can't get used to it, but it was very sweet of her. 
she got a jewelry making kit for her birthday. And she was so excited to make some jewelry. She also got a little like kids makeup kit and she was wearing some super bold pink lipstick <laughs> to the baseball game last night. <laughs> Brett had a baseball game and she went wearing the pink lipstick. We may have to crack the window open. I feel like it suddenly has gotten like a thousand degrees in here. I don't know what the deal is. I did kick the heat on the other day because it dropped below 70 degrees in the house and we all get chilly. That helps. I can feel a breeze coming in from the hall. <laughs> They're cracking the windows in my craft room open. You guys can see I'm getting faster and faster and getting more and more outside the lines, but I'm not too worried about it. So. I'm just trying to do this quickly so you guys don't feel like all you're doing is watching me trace. Um, while I'm doing this, how about we pick somebody for some happy mail? You guys leave a comment and Shan can pick somebody in the comments. And also let me know, um, Shan, if there's any questions that I might have missed. Does Canva do SVGs? Does Canva create SVGs? Um, you know what? Hang on. Let me go over there and click and look real quick download file type oh they do that's brand new I, it didn't used to do that but i do see that as a file type you can save as now so um when you go to download it it, it will pop up and it'll say what kind of file type do you want i believe we downloaded a png today so you would just have to select svg uh oh, also, I am using the paid version of Canva. It's Canva Pro. I believe it's about $15 a month. So some of the features that I have, it's possible that those features may not show up on your free version. Um, but as a business owner, just keep in mind, you can write things off like that um, on taxes because you're using it for your business. And I am an affiliate for Canva. So if anybody decides to convert to Canva Pro, Pro feel free to send me a message and I will give you my link so that you can use that. And I think it saves you some money too. Okay. Now that we have all of this traced, we can remove our lettering. Now, the other thing about the hinge is before we erase it, before we completely remove it, let's lift it up and see if we missed any spots. I did. Look, I missed the inside of that letter F right there. So I'm going to put this back down. Got somebody. Okay. We got some happy mail. Who's the happy mail person? Jolene Burns. She said, thank you for sharing how to use Canva. This makes my life so much easier. Jolene, if you will send me an email at info at southernadornmentsdecor.com, I will send you some happy mail. Uh, we'll be doing another one here in just a few minutes. Lisa said you could use this PNG with the PNG with your Cricut to make stencils too. Yes, absolutely. You can also use these files on your Glowforge if you save them as an SVG. So keep that in mind. Um, I did get a little crazy with my hands touching the graphite paper, and it made a bit of a mess transferring this graphite paper to the design. So I may have to see if I can get that off. This little thingy here I got from the Dollar Tree. It was called, a, what was this called? A something residue eraser. And it's like, essentially, it's like a little rubbery thing. And you can sit and wiggle it on this graphite paper or on something that's like smudged on your door hanger and it will erase it. Isn't that cool? Let's fix these little spots over here. There's a few spots where the graphite paper made a mess. At first it looks like it's getting worse, but the more you wiggle it, it eventually starts to go away. And I think it also helps that this door hanger has already been sealed. So these little marks are coming up easier because it's been sealed. Can I use Canva on the phone? Yes, you can use Canva on your phone. That's funny. I traced that little area to put that there and it still did not, did not come through. <laughs> um, let's see. Kim says I've had Canva forever and I really never just knew how to use it. There are a thousand ways to use Canva, Kim. Um, there's not just one way. Um, we use Canva to create the church bulletins for a uh, church. We use it to create the calendar for our church. We use it to create um, greeting cards. We use it to create our Facebook posts, some of our Instagram stories, our Pinterest pins. Canva is good for a million things. Okay, so now that we have this on here, let's get out a Posca pen and trace um, our lettering. So I've got the 5M size bullet tip black Posca pen, and I'm just going to quickly 
fill in the blanks. You can also use a paintbrush for this if you don't have Posca pens. The reason I chose the Posca pen today is because it's faster and I can be more precise with it. But in the past, before I had Posca pens, I used brushes all the time. Um, that's a great question. No, most of the time I do not seal first before I do the letters. Um, and that's simply because usually I do the letter at the same time. But on this particular door hanger, I had painted this live with you guys like two weeks ago. And so I had already gone ahead and sealed it. So um, it may give you a bit of an advantage simply because some sealers will cause these Posca pens to bleed. So if you wanted to go ahead and just be safe and seal it first, you could seal it. I am having a bit. Do you see how? It, I don't think y'all can see that. But I am having a bit of trouble getting the Posca pen to stick on top of the sealer. It's like when I, it's, a, it's like it's resisting. So I'm kind of having to go over some areas of this like twice to get it to cover really well. Because it's almost like it's just resisting letting that Posca pen stick on top of the sealer. It's not impossible, but it's just being stubborn. I'm kind of having to go over it like three times. So now just trace inside each letter. Again, the fonts we use today were called Apricot and Sunday. Fluffy Butt is Apricot. It's a handwritten font. And Sunday was the printed font. It's, it's a really good idea when you're trying to um, come up with lettering to mix your fonts, although I do not advise mixing more than two fonts in any particular um, thing with graphic design unless you just really know what you're doing because it can really start to look chaotic and messy if you're using way too many fonts. But in this case, if you want like the words fluffy butt to stand out, doing them in a different font and making them slightly larger really helps um, those words stand out and that's kind of the thing that catches your eye. Like I said, I think I'm going to put this outside with its chicken chicken coop. So I'm probably going to seal this really good on the front and back after I get this, le this lettering on there because it will be fully exposed to the elements out there on the chicken coop. Have I missed any questions guys? You still haven't found this little eraser at your Dollar Tree. Um, for Mine was on the craft aisle, right next to like the craft paints and the paint brushes and things like that. Maybe next time I'm at the Dollar Tree, I should just pick up a bunch of extras and those could be something I send in Happy Mail when I send it out. I sent out some cute little Crayola calligraphy books last week to some of our Happy Mail winners. They were on the uh, coloring book aisle of all places. I have not checked out the coloring book aisle in a long time just because my kids do not need one more coloring book. But they have stuff for adults on that aisle too. Do you paint all of your words with a pen? No, most of the time I paint my words with a paintbrush. Um, the only reason I'm doing this today is to save time because I feel like it's a little faster. So if I were going to do this with a paintbrush, I would probably use... One kind of like this that is small and it's pointed. It's a round tip. It would allow me to get inside these lines and to be able to have lots of control. Or I might use one like this that is like a tiny flat tip brush and it's real blunt at the edge. That would allow me to get like those nice, neat little um, blunt serifs on the end of the printed font. So after this tutorial today, am I going to start seeing lots of door hangers you guys share with me with your own custom lettering on it? Is this going to up your game? I hope so. It is rather fast to do with the paint pen. One other thing that might be helpful doing this over a sealed background is because if I goofed up right now, I could probably, if I worked fast enough, get a baby wipe out and, and wipe up what I just did and redo it. Whereas that would be harder on a background that had been sealed.
Y'all want to do another Happy Meal winner? I should have started it earlier when we were doing Canva at the beginning, but I was intense in my tutorial. <laughs> Y'all be commenting, and Shan will pick somebody else for Happy Mail. We usually do three in every live. I love sending you guys goodies in the mail. Fluffy butt hut. Okay, so what we haven't done yet, though, is add our drop shadow. So don't go anywhere just yet. We're going to do that next. Um, we're going to do that with another paint pen using white. What is your email? Oh, it is right here. You're talking about the email for... Oh, for Canva. Oh, hmm. I may have to go find that. I don't know if I have that saved. Let me go look real quick, see if I have that saved right here. Um, I don't have it saved. Sorry, guys. How do you email us? Just email us, and we will send you the link for it. Um, <laughs> because <laughs> I didn't have it saved. But I didn't even think about giving that to you guys. For the Canva Pro. Canva is free, by the way. You don't have to have my link to use Canva. Um, but if you decide to use the Canva Pro where you're paying monthly for all the extra features, then um, use my affiliate link and I'll send it to you. Do you seal your words af now afterwards? Yes, I will seal afterwards. All right, let's add in our uh, white drop shadow. Oh, we have a winner. Cindy Reader. She said, me and my chicken both have a fluffy butt. <laughs> I love that comment. I can see why Shan picked you. That's funny. Um, so, yeah, Cindy, send us an email with your address, and we will send you some happy mail. All right, right now I've got a little scrap piece of paper out here, and I'm trying to get my paint pen going because I haven't used this white pen in a while. So you can see it's getting a little darker. Let me give it another good shake. Whoops. I accidentally pushed the, the, the thing down inside the cap. Danita said, we can add any words from now on with our door hangers. Yes, ma'am, you can. That's awesome. Is there another way to get better coverage for the white marker? Mm, Mary, I'm not really sure that there is. Um, going over it twice sometimes is the trick. See, it got darker then. All that shaking really helped. So I pumped the pen several times, and then I gave it a good shake, and now I'm getting better white coverage. So let's see what we get here. With the white drop shadow on a white background, you're only going to be able to see it in some spots. Actually, this is not showing up thick enough. So let's just go with option B and get white paint and do it the old school way. Are those paint pens refillable? No, the Posca pens are not refillable. It's all right. I'll just use the cap. Um, I've got my little bitty blunt tip, flat tip brush like I was showing you guys. <clears throat> Let me see if this is going to be a good brush to do it with. You really can't see it on top of the white um, areas, but it does show up nicely on the painted areas. And I'm doing it on the left and bottom side of each part of the letter. So the thing is, if you always get confused about where you should have your shadowing, then save that photo on um, Canva that we just did where it showed where to put the shadowing. And you can use that as a reference for where your shadows should go. Oh, um, the necklace on my little chicken is actually made of the little wood beads that are cut in half. Okay, this brush is frustrating me. So we're going to put that down and we're going to switch to a different one. <laughs> I'm switching to a round tip brush. The other one I was having a hard time getting a nice curved line with. Um, so it's made of these little wooden beads that are cut in half. And you can get those in my Amazon shop if you want them. They come with a big old bag of them. I have a bunch and I still haven't even used them all. We taught how to do that in the Painter's Clubhouse. And then uh, we used it also a couple weeks ago on this tutorial when I taught it live. Don't forget this little bitty area here. So we're only going on one side of each letter and then the bottom side of the letters. Don't trace, don't make the mistake of tracing around every part of the letter that kind of makes it to where the whole letter is glowing instead of having a drop shadow. <coughs> How will you hide the drop shadow on the white background? You don't have to really. So if you remember in the photo on Canva, we didn't even notice 
that it wasn't showing up on the white. And that's just because like your, I think your eye like does, plays a trick on you and just kind of like makes you assume that you can see it or makes you assume that it's there, even though it's not. Oh, yes. So sorry. Let me make this bigger for you guys. There we go. Is that a little better? I can even get you down here lower. Yeah. So you can see it if this thing will stop falling on me. Are we stable? <laughs> sort of. It's sort of sliding. Okay. So like when you're looking at that, so your eye is not, it, it shouldn't be drawn to the fact that um, it's not showing up on the white. Like your eye kind of just assumes it's there. Now, if we had done a colored drop shadow, um, you would have been able to still see that. I could have done this with the paint pen, but the paint pen was not giving me the coverage that I wanted. It was kind of thin, so rather than just continue to mess with it, I just pulled out a paintbrush today and decided to do it this way. Thank you. Shan keeping an eye on me. She said, I forgot this little area here. Bet you somebody in the comments may have already said something about it and I just didn't even, didn't even see it. There we go. Now the rest of that you can't really see because it's on white. But that created just a nice little um, drop shadow that makes it to where, um, hang on, remove this. <laughs> and then remove, or add this to sell it. Okay, let me move this out of the way. So look, it added almost, it kind of, even though the drop shadow is not shown on the white, it kind of makes the words pop just a little bit more. It makes them look just almost 3D, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was really helpful. Let me see if anybody had any follow-up questions. And we'll choose one more person for happy mail before I go. That way we get three in. Uh, you love the drop shadow and you learned that in hand lettering class. Awesome. Camera's in a great position. Thank you, Judy. Are your Posca pens medium point? So um, all of the ones that I have, like in this little set here, which is where I was pulling these from, are the um, medium point, which is five a 5M size. I actually keep these uh, and the main thing we use these on are little bitty projects like some of the tiered tray sets that I might paint or uh, stuff the kids want to paint. They actually love using these and it makes painting with kids um, a lot more mess free. Now the the ones that are tinier are 3M. I use those almost just as much. I also have some that are a bullet tip size that are a 7M. I use those less frequently but they do also have a place. So. I use them for different things, but the one I use the most probably is the 5M size, which is the medium tip. Um, did you coat your canvas with a sealer? So we spray, I spray sealed this two weeks ago, and then we added the lettering. So I'm going to seal it a second time to protect my lettering before I go hang it on the chicken coop. Lynn says, your chicken coop is going to be so stylish with this sign. I think so, too. Um, we actually have a chicken who is trying to become a mama and she's sitting on three little eggs that have been fertilized. But the thing is, she doesn't realize there's not a rooster in the coop and she keeps taking all the other eggs and scooping them under her, not knowing they are not going to turn into chickens. So we have to go out there every couple of days and pull out the eggs that will not become chicks. <laughs> but we only have three that are fertilized. We got those from our neighbors. All right. Who's our final happy mail winner? Have you guys picked somebody? Um, thank you, Lori. <laughs> Thank you for sprinkling the love today, guys. Susan's never used these for lettering. Oh, uh, Katie Kil Gilchrist, if you will send me an email, I will send you some happy mail. You're our final happy mail winner. Thank you for um, showing up today and commenting and sharing the love. We appreciate it so much. If you need to, just screenshot my email. Poor little mama. Yeah, she doesn't know. I think she's just like, I'll take that one, and I'll take that one. And she keeps pulling all the other chicken's eggs up under her fluffy butt. <laughs> appropriately named sign. <laughs> what kind of chickens do you have? Erica, I have a variety. I have um, a Rhode Island Red, some Plymouth Bard Rock, some Americanas. We used to have Silkies. Um, I have some Buff Orpingtons. The Buff Orpington is the one who's actually sitting on the eggs. Those make the best mama, mama hens. They go broody at least once a season. 
All right, y'all have a great afternoon. Hopefully you've learned a lot about hand lettering and now chickens also. <laughs> Bye y'all.